Hey guys, and welcome back to Flirt. I hope that you're having a really good start to your week. Um, if you've been following my social medias, like Twitter or Instagram, maybe even Tumblr, I'm not even sure, um, you'll know that I've spent this past week um, with my grandmother who had a stroke on Monday. I spent a lot of time in the hospital. I'm sure it's apparent I'm exhausted. So I decided for my video this week, um, I was going to talk about how to get through um, having a sick family member in the hospital. Um, obviously, my experience was a little different um, because I have medical background. I got my certified nurse assistant degree, so I knew a lot of what was going on and um, I'd had a lot of experience working as a CNA with um, different people who had suffered strokes in different stages. Here's some of my tips on how to get through any sort of family member being in the hospital. My first piece of advice is anytime that your family member is comfortable sleeping, um, or you just notice if they're a lot more relaxed looking, give yourself some rest. Like, take a nap, go to sleep if it's night, um, because it's a very exhausting process being there with a sick family member, and you've just got to make sure that your body is getting enough rest to help relieve some of that exhaustion. My second piece of advice is to give yourself breaks frequently and often, um, whether it's going for a walk or um, walking to a vending machine to get a snack or a drink. Um, I did a couple times where I went and sat in the visitor's lounge on the hospital floor and did some stuff on the computer just to get out of the room for a little bit, get your mind off what's going on. It gives your mind a little break um, and it's good for your mental well-being to just not focus on that every single second. As hard as it is, it's good to take breaks so don't feel guilty doing so. My third piece of advice is to find your support system. Um, I am very fortunate. Um, I had my entire family kind of in and out of the hospital during the times that I was staying there consecutively. Um, so I was able to lean on them and a bunch of my friends that were in the area offered support and basically told me if I needed anything to let them know whether it was to sit with me for a while if it was just me sitting there or giving me a place to stay if I needed a break or going and doing something just to get my mind off of things. Kind of figure out who you can go to during that time because it's difficult to handle it on your own and it makes it so much easier on yourself to just accept any help that you can get and it take any support. Number four, bring stuff to entertain yourself. Um, I guess I was more focused on making sure my grandma was comfortable and relaxed, and I was pretty restless, honestly, and I didn't really bring a lot of things to entertain myself with or distract myself, um, and I actually didn't even watch TV that much, but bringing other things while they're comfortable, relaxing. It's just nice. It gives your mind something else to think about, but you don't actually have to feel like you have to physically leave the room. So I would recommend doing that. Um, like I said, I didn't really bring much, so that's something that could have also helped um, during the process of being there. Number five, if you have any questions for the medical staff, don't hesitate to ask, especially if you need something. Um, I was very fortunate the medical staff that was with my grandma was very accommodating. Um, 
if we asked for like blankets or um, anything basically they made sure to take care of it for us um, I realize that maybe not every hospital is that accommodating or can be that accommodating but um, especially if you're concerned about what's going on with your family member it puts your mind at ease knowing what they're doing ask because it's part of their job to keep you informed as to what they're doing and as a family member you do have a right to know six don't be afraid to ask for help um, this kind of goes along with finding your support system like when your support system is set and there and they offer that help to you about 99% of the time you'll know if they're being genuine or not and if they are take it take any help that you can get because it is tiring it is exhausting and you deserve to um, take care of yourself which is my last piece of advice you've got to take care of yourself um, one thing with this past week is I've been so consumed taking care of my grandma making sure she's okay that I actually neglected my own health and that's not good obviously um, it happens sometimes when you get put in those positions I was fortunate enough to have people around me reminding me to go get some food take frequent breaks um, and everything just making sure that I was kind of remembering to take care of myself instead of just focusing strictly on my grandma. Um, it's a difficult task, and especially if you're really close to that family member, but you do have to take care of yourself. Um, I was there every day from Thursday until Monday, and I finally decided that I needed to take a night off and go uh, stay elsewhere and shower and get all situated um, just to give myself a little mental break. So that's my vlog for this week. Hopefully this will help somebody that might be uh, going through what I went through this past week. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see me every Tuesday and since this is Pick Your Topic week, um, I the bloggers are doing other things. Um, I hope that all of my advice was coherent enough because I'm really tired and sometimes can't form full sentences. Um, but don't forget to like this video and comment below if you have any other pieces of advice or things to do when you have a family member in the hospital. Um, and I will see you guys next Tuesday. Have a great rest of the week and rest in peace grandma I love you